Hello, my name's Rich Pepe, and welcome to The Spike, where each episode I'll be putting some beef back into the frozen lasagna of news. If you think the press are worried about Romanian horse meat, just wait for the people to arrive. Yes, it's the news that Romania and Bulgaria will next year join Britain as full members of the EU, meaning their people will be able to choose between a life in a country wrapped by joblessness, poverty and social division, or staying at home in Eastern Europe. Much of Fleet Street has been busy hammering this imminent cataclysm into the national consciousness in the language of a deep sea horror B-movie. We'll be swamped! New EU wave! Thousands plan to flood UK! and leading the Daily Express to pose the question that was on absolutely nobody's lips. Should Britons give up their jobs for migrants? And there was me thinking I only had to give migrants my firstborn child. The recent surge in these tedious, paint by bollock scare stories can be traced back a fortnight to when Oliver Letwin was rounded on by journalists for the shocking crime of telling the truth. Cabinet Office Minister Oliver Letwin was denounced by Tory MPs last night after he said the government would not know how many Romanians and Bulgarians would emigrate to the UK until they are here. Is that really a surprise? What did we expect Letwin to go door to door like a Jehovah's Witness around the streets of Eastern Europe asking people if they're planning to emigrate to Britain? Or invent some sort of time-travelling car with the help of a wacky professor that will help him see into the future. In the absence of any official figures into just how many people will come to do all the shitty low-paid jobs we can't be asked to do, the papers guessed. The Telegraph punted at 250,000. The Sun saw their 250 and raised them to 350,000. But those crazy bastards over at the Daily Express, they went all in with 29 million. The entire population of Romania and Bulgaria combined. What none of these papers find room to mention is the fact that Bulgarians and Romanians have been free to move to the UK since 2007. And it's not as if we're all drowning in goulash and... Uh, cabbage. Cabbage. What gets me is the likes of The Sun and The Mail are happy to sell their newspapers to British expats living all around Europe, but they want to hand-pick anyone coming the other way. This is Britain. People come, people go. We're talking about an island, not an invite to the Playboy Mansion. Now, you can't have missed it. The big news this week, the historic discovery in a car park that captured the nation's imagination. That's right. Kimberly Walsh carrying off some bold printed trousers. Of course, all the big news seems to happen in car parks these days, nowhere more so than in the US. Which brings us to our next feature we like to call Shit That Happens in US Car Parks. Here's Reese Witherspoon in a US car park. Here's Kim Kardashian in a US car park. Here's Leah Michelle in a US car park. Jenna Doohan in a US car park. Malin Ackerman in a US car park. Casey Cobb in a US car park. Who the fuck is Casey Cole? Jessica Alba, Jennifer Gardner, and Halle Berry, and Nicole Kidman in a US car park. <sighs> Busy week. And that concludes shit that happens in US car parks. Last week, through gritted teeth, the Daily Mail reported 330 complaints, but obscene Channel 4 quiz is cleared by Watchdog. The modest placement of this news was in stark contrast to the fire and brimstone campaign they launched back in January against the show with headlines like this. Channel 4 and the sick show they call comedy. Silence of Channel 4 bosses. Board refuses to respond to fury over obscene quiz. Sick comic facing acts. And when Channel 4 refused to comment, by staying silent, they are behaving like cowards. All because some comics made jokes about fragile, defenseless old ladies like the Queen, Susan Boyle and Usain Bolt. Jokes that were so heinously offensive the Daily Mail printed them in full, allegedly so readers could decide whether the show should have been broadcast. The answer from their own readers on their own website was loud and clear. This newspaper is pathetic. Stop trying to make this into a big important issue that everyone should be enraged by. We're not. You continue to misrepresent the situation and speak of outrage that simply does not exist. This article is the embodiment of everything that is wrong with the modern media. But the bullshit wagon rolled on, which brings us right back to where we came in. And this from renter quote Tory Connor Burns. Decisions like these start to make the case for an organisation like Ofcom being replaced by an organisation with more gumption and sharper teeth. Fellow Tory MP Mark Pritchard waded in. I'm surprised Ofcom has decided not to investigate the matter that caused offence to hundreds of people through the country. It needs to be far more robust. I'm not sure 300 odd complaints out of millions of viewers is mass offence. If only there was a better example of a media organisation causing outrage and getting off scot-free. 
Inaccurate, intrusive and discriminatory. Three of the words used to describe one of the most controversial newspaper articles of last year. But the Press Complaints Commission has chosen not to uphold a complaint about Jan Moyer's column on Stephen Gately's death. It spread like wildfire across Facebook and Twitter, prompting a record 25,000 complaints to the PCC. 25,000 complaints. Now that's mass offence. Now let's remind ourselves what Paul Dacre, editor of the Daily Mail, had to say about Jan Moyer's article at the Leveson Inquiry. You realise that these are all online complaints and that this is an example of how tweetering, tweetering, tweetering can create a firestorm within hours. A well-known celebrity, admitted he hadn't read the article, said it was unpleasant, was then tweeted to other people who retweeted and we had a viral storm. Most of those people conceded they hadn't read the piece that's where the 25,000 complaints came to the PCC, came from to the PCC. Which would be entirely different from a well-known newspaper publishing an article about a TV show being unpleasant and then tweeting it and attempting to create a viral storm despite knowing full well many of the people being goaded to complain hadn't even seen the original show. Entirely different. So on the one hand, the Daily Mail has this week been publishing calls for tougher regulation of the media. On the other hand, it spent the whole of the Leveson inquiry denouncing tougher regulation of their own part of the media. I'm going to contact the Daily Mail and ask them just how they reconcile this apparent hypocrisy. And if they fail to respond, we know what we can conclude. By staying silent, they are behaving like cowards. Now, I know here at The Spike we can be hard on the press, but Valentine's the time to put aside our differences and reach out to find someone, anyone, who will love us and stop making us feel so fucking desperate and alone in the world. So here at The Spike, we've created some Valentine's cards for the media whore in your life. Those roses had better not been picked by fucking Romanians. Roses are red, violets are blue. If you go to prison, I'll wait for you. I've listened to all your voicemails and nobody loves you like I do. He's all heart, that Murdoch. That's all from us at The Spike. Thanks for watching. If you see a story you'd like us to spike, get in touch at thespikeuk at gmail.com.